Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the features in Photoshop's Save for Web dialog box and optimize a JPEG for viewing online. Let's get started. So just like the name implies, the Save for Web dialog lets you optimize and save your images in a few of the most popular file formats for viewing on the web. So here's our document, which is just a few textures and this little transparent area here in the middle. To open the Save for Web dialog, all you have to do is click File, Save for Web, or use the keyboard shortcut Control, Alt, Shift, and S. We'll start with the settings over here on the right. At the very top, you'll see a preset dropdown, which has a few different formats and different quality settings for each of those formats. To understand these presets, we're going to have to go through these individual settings one at a time. The first thing you'll see under the presets is a format dropdown menu. This lets you choose between GIF, JPEG, PNG, and bitmap files. We're going to go over JPEG since that's the most widely used file format on the internet. Under the file format dropdown, you'll see a compression quality dropdown ranging from low to maximum. If I select one of these settings and scroll through it, you'll see that the quality to the right changes as I scroll. The higher the quality you choose, the bigger your file size will be. So the trick is to find a quality setting that looks good, but also leaves you with a file that won't take forever to download. I usually like to start around 60 and tweak it up or down from there if necessary. If you look down here in the bottom left, you'll see a file size estimate, as well as a download time estimate for that current file size based on your internet connection speed. So at a quality of 60, my file size is going to be 318.5 kilobytes. And with a 1 megabit per second connection, which is typical of a cable connection, it will take 4 seconds to download. You can also change the connection speed by clicking this little icon and selecting a speed from the list. If I change the quality from 60 all the way down to about 10, you'll see that my file size changes to only 83 kilobytes, and the download time decreases to only 2 seconds. Underneath the quality is blur. Now with JPEGs, the more detail that's in your file, the bigger the file size is going to be. So by blurring the image a bit, you can make a slightly smaller file. If I come up to the blur and increase that to about 0.3 or so, you'll notice that my file size decreases just a little bit. Obviously, you can overdo this, so the trick is to increase your blur to an amount where it makes the file size smaller, but you don't see a loss in the image quality. Typically, I leave my blur set all the way to zero because I want the sharpest image possible. Underneath blur, you'll see matte. And what you'll notice is that transparent spot in my Photoshop file is showing up as white in my Save for Web dialog. That's because JPEGs don't support transparency in images. So anything that's transparent will be filled with whatever color you set under your mat here. So you can choose any of these presets or just click on the mat to open up the color picker and select a custom mat color. And you'll notice that it updates here. The progressive checkbox here will make your image downloaded multiple passes with each pass containing more detail than the last. This used to be popular when internet connections were a lot slower because images could take 30 seconds to download, and if you loaded them in multiple passes, you could see a low-res preview of the images before it finished downloading. Nowadays, it's not really used because connections are a lot faster. Next, you'll see the Optimize checkbox. This will make your file even smaller at the expense of it being less compatible with other software. Fortunately, pretty much all browsers and software support optimized JPEGs, so you'll want to leave this checked. If you're working with a file where color reproduction is important, you can embed your current color profile to make the colors look more correct on other monitors. To do that, you'll just check the Embed Color Profile checkbox. This increases the file size a little bit, but it can be useful for things like photographs, especially if they have people in them. The Convert to sRGB checkbox does exactly what it says and converts the color space of your image to sRGB. This is the best color space for viewing images online, so you'll typically want to leave this checked. Under that, you can also preview your color space based on different monitors or color profiles. Under that, you'll see metadata. And what metadata is, is text information that gets saved along with your JPEG, like a description, keywords, copyright information, and more. You can choose to save none of this, all of this, or just certain aspects of the metadata. The color table is not used for JPEGs, so we'll move on to image size. 
You can specify the size at which to save your image in pixels or in percent. You can also lock the width to height aspect ratio by clicking this little icon here, and change the quality of your interpolation using this drop down here. The animation options only apply to GIFs, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Over here on the left are a few tools that you might be familiar with. The first one is the hand tool. This lets you drag your image around in the Save for Web window if it's a little too big to fit. The Slice tool will let you select and edit settings for individual slices in your document if you've set them up beforehand. If you're not familiar with slices in Photoshop, you can ignore that tool for now. The Zoom tool lets you highlight and zoom in on a certain part of your image. You can also set the zoom amount in percentage by clicking the little drop down down here and choosing the percent that you want to view. Just like in the main Photoshop window, you can hold space to use the Move tool, or hold Alt and click to zoom out. Next is the Eyedropper tool, which lets you select a color from your image. This can be used for things like the mat, where you can select the drop down and choose Eyedropper color to use the color that you select with the Eyedropper tool. The last icon here lets you turn off visibility for your slices. So you can see I have this little one icon here, which is showing me that my whole image is one slice. If I click this icon, it'll turn that off. That's helpful if you have your image sliced up into multiple pieces, like if you were working with a web design. Something that's helpful to see your changes are these four tabs up here, which helps you view your image in the original form, the optimized form, or in a few different variations. The two up tab lets you see both your original image and one optimized image. This is helpful to see if the settings you're choosing are degrading your image quality too much. So my original is up here and my optimized version is down here. If I set my image quality to zero, you can see there's a big difference between the quality of my original and my optimized image. If I set it back up to 60, you can see that there's not a huge difference in quality, but my image size will be a whole lot smaller. The 4-Up tab lets you compare your original image with three variations of settings. You just click on the variation that you want to edit before changing your settings. So if I click on this top right variation, I can come over and set the quality to 100, and then click the bottom left variation and set the quality to 50, and then the bottom right variation and set the quality to 0. Now I can look at all three of them compared to my original image and see what settings will work best. You can also click the preview button down here to open your optimized image in a browser. The button to the right of the preview button lets you choose which browser you want to open your preview in. Lastly, you can hit save or cancel to finish things up, or you can press the done button which will save all of your current settings into your Photoshop file without actually saving the final JPEG image to your computer. Different file formats are good for different things. GIFs can be animated, while PNG files can contain transparency. You'll learn more about the different file formats in other videos. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.